to begin with, we have Professor Richard Longstaff, who is going to be our first speaker for today. Richard Longstaff is a practicing chartered architectural technologist, course group leader for architectural technology and a senior lecturer at Anglia Ruskin University, which happens to be a part of School of Engineering and Build Environment and located at Chelmsford, Essex, UK. His areas of expertise are built environment and architectural technology. Richard's interests lie in combining environment sustainability with the aesthetics and tectonics of architecture by exploring the complex relationship between site context, passive design techniques, biophilic designs, and build ability to create adaptive architecture that transcends mediocrity, is fit for purpose and relevant for society's future needs. After a period working with London Design Office and delivering large urban design developments, Richard has now tutored in architecture and technology at Anglia Ruskin since 2005. He has developed his teaching in parallel with establishing a small award-winning design and research studio in 2002, where he practices applied research and methods as a chartered architectural technologist. Today, Richard will be presenting his topic about the new normal, in which he speaks about architecture and urban design as a climate emergency, a case study of one UK town's response to building bridges between local authority and community in saving the town's mature street trees and through collaborative dialogues encouraging the biggest tree plantation season in the town's history. Richard will investigate the wider issues facing towns and cities in response to climate emergency and how green infrastructure will play an ever note significant role in how we design our buildings and shape our cities for an uncertain future. Over to you, Richard. Hello and uh, good uh, morning, good afternoon uh, from the UK. Um, thank you for inviting me to talk uh, during this uh, Uni Talks uh, online seminar webinar. Uh, my name is Richard Longstaff. I'm a senior lecturer and course leader at Anglia Ruskin University in Chelmsford. And I practice also as a chartered architectural technologist. Um, I'm joining you today to talk about uh, this um, initiative that we've been undertaking at my hometown in Southend on Sea, uh, in Essex, which is east of London on the Thames Estuary. And I just wanted to share with you um, a case study of um, an initiative that we set up last June. 2019 and we called it this initiative once upon a tree and uh, once upon a tree was quite apt because every tree tells a story and we wanted to um, protect our town's street trees and to convey the importance of uh, ecological infrastructure to our local authority um, this uh, is on our doorstep this is a uh, woodland ancient woodland um, it's not very expansive, uh, but it's local to us and it's a, a, a very popular nature reserve, which of course has become uh, more popular um, since the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and as has our open spaces. So this presentation is, is a presentation I give to various uh, organisations about once upon a tree but i wanted to expand on that today uh, beyond the core mission of, of once upon a tree and to talk also about the issues of uh, our changing climate and the importance of green ecological infrastructure uh, particularly with street trees and planting within our urban environments so um, we're a non-profit social enterprise formed by a community that felt uh, that too many of our mature street trees were being removed. Um, we started June last year and our core mission was to grow, protect and plant trees across our borough and beyond. So we're hoping this has now expanded out countywide on a regional basis. And we also hope to um, initiate once upon a tree activities in other parts of the world. Um, we achieved our core mission through primarily community engagement um, involving a grassroots community movement um, and collaboration between stakeholders across Southend 
different charitable organisations um, to lobby the council um, and uh, the, the various uh, public ministers. So what do we love? We, we, we love um, our urban street trees and this is a selection of trees from around our borough um, at local parks, woodland. And this is our main civic avenue with our civic municipal authority building uh, there in the background. And you can see it's a wonderful um, tree lined avenue um, that gives visitors to our town uh, a nice sense of um, green infrastructure. And of course, the trees um, add to the well being of, of people. Sadly, this isn't the case across the, the borough. Um, and many trees have been lost in recent years. Uh, we did a freedom of information request um, with the local authority and learned that 3,000 street trees have been removed over a period of um, 10 years. So some 300 years of, tree, of tr trees were being lost and, and not being replaced uh, as per the, um, the, the, the uh, 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 tree policy. So key features of uh, trees, street trees, particularly uh, within our urban realm are London Plain, um, Silver Birch, Common Lime, the Horse Chestnut, Rowan, and sometimes Holly. Okay, these, these are very good hardy species for um, urban planting. Um, and of course, these trees uh, create habitat for a, a, a whole host of wildlife. Um, giving them somewhere to, 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 to they create almost small ecological habitats um, for, for wildlife which are already in the UK 75% um, of uh, our native species have declined over the last 50 or 60 years so in my lifetime we, we've seen a, a huge decline um, partly because of um, expansion of urban environments and the use of per pesticides and herbicides in, in industrial farming. And I, and I know that's the same across the world. Um, no country is immune from, from this. So the benefits trees provide us, um, they tr provide street trees and, and, and urban woods or pocket woods have huge value, um, both monetary value as well as um, uh, well-being value so they're beneficial to our mental and physical health and again as uh, mental health issues increase um, our urban green infrastructure would become increasingly important um, they can reduce flooding um, an issue we're having right now across the world with uh, climate change is increased uh, severe weather events in terms of severe droughts and severe flooding and trees and urban inf green infrastructure can act as uh, an attainment for uh, water uh, runoff. Um, so it's very important uh, to have, have, have many trees in our urban environment. Uh, as I mentioned, provides habitat for wildlife. It can lower noise pollution. Uh, we're not talking just about trees, but also uh, hedges and verges uh, this, this can combat air pollution also, which is uh, an increasing problem within our towns and cities. Um, it can um, also increase property values. We see a marked increase in property values for um, uh, uh, urban areas where there are uh, many trees planted. Um, and the big thing for me from an urban design perspective is uh, to reduce the ambient temperature within towns and cities. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about the urban heat island effect during the presentations. Okay, so trees are under threat from development and removal. Um, fewer trees are planted in urban areas uh, because street trees and vegetation costs money to maintain. But of course, they have a cash value to have a monetary value as an amenity asset and I, I want to talk about that also so to put that into context we um, in South End particularly we see air pollution has risen since 2016 and this is not uncommon in, in many towns and cities across the world um, 
a recent Guardian article mentioned that uh, hitting clean air targets in the UK could stop 67 child asthma cases per year. Southend is now amongst the highest uh, polluted towns in the UK with a um, United Nations uh, pollution index of 12. Southend is one of hundreds of cities around the world that is monitored directly by the United Nations World Health Organization. And uh, London is now uh, measures 11. So Southend is now more pol polluted than London, which is a surprise to all of us. And this is largely due to London's uh, successful ultra low emission zone, which um, uh, is, is, has, has banned all old polluting cars and lorries and buses. So um, this is having a, a net positive effect on reducing um, air pollution in the capital. So the UN World Health Organization maximum is, is 10. To give you an example comparison, uh, Brisbane in Australia is a uh, higher population than South End, has an air pollution index of just seven, which is, is very good. So why is this a problem? Um, 36,000 premature deaths in the UK are caused uh, directly due to air pollution. Uh, this is from Public Health England, and I know of similar uh, scenarios and statistics across the world. Um, so air pollution um, is, is a real issue and I know that many towns and cities are realising that now during this lockdown where the pandemic has seen a reduction in, 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 in traffic and uh, therefore pollution. So as I mentioned we have 36 premature deaths in the UK. We have uh, in South End an expanding airport which is adding to this issue. And we have some of the biggest ports in Europe at, uh, on the Thames at Tilbury and, um, and uh, uh, um, Tilbury and uh, Shellhaven, uh, which is where the DP World facility is. And these ports are expanding. There's going to be a construction of a new cruise ship terminal. And so all of these uh, ports are, are expanding. And the, and the issue is South Indies on the Thames. So we pick up the southwesterly wind, which brings that pollution to us. Um, and of course, the nitrogen dioxide and fine particular matter released by this uh, increased activity in vehicles, shipping, jet aeroplanes, um, all contribute to public health issues and childhood asthma. Um, <clears throat> And trees, of course, uh, are, can filter this pollution and help reduce the particulate matter by filtering out um, this, uh, this, this airborne uh, pollution. Um, another issue um, I touched on was the urban heat island effects. You know, what is the urban heat island effects and how does it affect um, cities? I know from personal experience that the ambient air temperature in London is often three, four, five degrees warmer um, than surrounding uh, greener hinterland uh, on the city fringes. And, <coughs> and um, the, uh, as the climate changes, we're going to be experiencing more severe warmer weather. Last year was a record for the UK, which is not uncommon around the world. Um, but the, the hottest years on record have been in, in the most recent years. Um, so these maps here uh, show us a heat map of um, a traffic junction in London. This is in the London borough of Barnet. And uh, this is uh, showing, the top map is showing uh, nitrous oxide uh, concentrations uh, for 2013. And you can see those highest on the main trunk roads here um, running through the urban uh, landscape and the bottom map is um, the same uh, context but uh, showing a heat map of the um, urban heat island effects um, uh, in, in context and relation to the traffic. So there's a direct correlation between uh, the, 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 the tarmac, the concrete, all the thermal mass of the city um, and the uh, increase in ambient temperatures. Okay, so trees uh, 
help to shade that. Um, they reduce the uh, heat island effect. And of course, the problem with the heat island effect is that uh, this has an, uh, uh, a direct effect on uh, building temperatures. And as buildings are built higher with more glass and steel, the solar gain from uh, th that those glazed facades uh, causes the interiors to heat up. And what with the ambient temperature externally heating as well, um, this all causes uh, higher, higher energy demand, uh, which of course is part of the problem, is the, uh, uh, the, the, the power generation. So this is a, a, a quick comparative of uh, a, a street with, um, with trees and without trees, and in comparatives of uh, uh, temperatures, uh, both um, ambient air temperature in, in the top image is 50 degrees and the lower image 26 degrees and the facade temperature can be as high as 36 um, on building facades and just 18 um, and at street level um, 20 degrees as opposed to 43 degrees so um, trees have a really important role to play in reducing this urban heat island in the European heat wave um, I think of 20, I think it was 2016, there were thousands of uh, reported deaths um, because of heat exhaustion and uh, sunstroke uh, because people, you know, people without air conditioning uh, just can't escape this uh, increasing temperature. So our response to um, our local um, authority was not just to go complaining we actually went uh, with evidence base and we used a eye tree calculation method and worked with uh, professional arboriculturalists and we um, we produced um, an eye tree calculation which basically um, shows the correlation between tree canopy cover within an urban environment or, or within a given district uh, and its um, ability to sequester and absorb carbon dioxide um, and then it shows that comparison with the carb the net carbon dioxide emissions for that that town or city and so you you get a monetary value of what the tree canopy uh, is is worth and and what's that that's worth to the environment so it's quite a complex uh, calculation system um, but once this is uh, done we can turn this into some interesting uh, infographics and this was done uh, recently for a uh, UK town in Wrexham and the takeaway information here is that the ecosystem services provided by the town's trees were collectively valued at 1.4 million per annum so um, you know so, so 60 tonnes of air pollution was removed from the, the air a year saving the NHS £700,000 so it's important to um to to convey to the local authorities the not just the importance of trees uh, but to provide this empirical evidence that there is actually monetary value to the amenity asset of of street trees and uh, green ecology within our urban environment so we we learned that the uh the the, the minimum tree cover uh, canopy cover in coastal towns should be 15 percent and in South End, the figure was just uh, uh, 13%, um, and Lee is just 10%. It's, it's worth noting here that the UK has the least amount of tree canopy cover across Europe. We have the least amount of forest cover. And so basically in South End, we need tens of thousands more trees um, as soon as possible uh, to, um, to, to compensate and counter the uh, the, the, the issue of, of um, urban heat island effect and uh, pollution. Um, okay, so um, the UK government are investing um, money in tree planting. About 15 million trees have been planted in England uh, between 2010 and 2018. Uh, many urban areas did not receive any funding for planting and if you can see here on the map um, South End is a grey area no funding was received for tree planting so we have not had any support 
um, which means that there's an extra onus on us as a community and local authority to, um, to, 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 to address the problem. So the problem was that trees were being cut down, as I mentioned, at a rate of 300 a year. And some of them like this tree here in the center was a perfectly healthy horse chestnut tree reduced to a stump. And for some spurious reasons, sometimes just because they were incompatible with highway repairs, but we, we think this highway repair could have been quite easily remedied and the tree saved. So we, we started our campaign as uh, once a tree in South End. And there's, there's, there's roads in South End that were previously lined with beautiful horse chestnuts, completely decimated and uh, removed, which completely changes the whole nature and landscape of the tree. So we started our campaign to lobby local council in a positive way and this is what spurred us to set up once upon a tree this tree here in the background was uh, was was earmarked for removal because of incompatibility with uh, highway repairs but this this is um we we we've we've, we've been um expressing to the council that trees have real monetary amenity value and we worked with the um acclaimed a arboriculturalist Chris Nealon to um, to express uh, his his caveat system he came to our first public meeting uh, which we were glad that uh, many councillors attended from the local authority and Chris uh, was a London arboriculturalist for many years and is actually the arboriculturalist that teaches arboriculturalist and Chris devised the caveat system which is a, a value a valuing tree system for as a as a as a, as a means to give them a an, an amenity value a monetary value and this makes local authorities look at trees in a completely different light as soon as you mention um, that trees have a, are a value asset to the community and they they can have a monetary value placed on them it completely changes the way that local authority view the trees because of course once a tree is removed it can never be replaced in our lifetime. And that's the most difficult thing to, um, to, to take is uh, that, that, you know, unlike a building, we can replace a building. We cannot, we cannot replace mature trees. So we, Chris left us with this thought that South End needs to plant a million trees to make an impact. Uh, he shared with us Curio XYZ, which is like a Facebook for trees and our ecological environment. This is uh, an open source free app which I would recommend uh, citizens to download and um, start geotagging the trees in their neighborhoods. Um, and it's an easy to use phone based app which can use uses Google Maps. And then we advised uh, on the tree policy uh, and this is using the tree and design action group, uh, some of their uh, literature uses excellent infographics which clearly explains and shows um, four themes to tr street tree management, which is the protection, the compensation, the design, and the management of our trees. And this was put together with the Tree and Design Action Group in the University of Birmingham. So we want to see local authorities actually including uh, ecological design and corridors within their spatial master plans and local development plans. And this is an example from Birmingham City Council uh, showing uh, ecological corridors. Um, and there's this uh, tabulated um, uh, list, which is a very easy ready reckoner in terms of the strengths and limitations of those four themes um, on the uh, town and city's uh, tr green infrastructure. So this is protection, compensation, design, and management. Okay, so I'm flicking through that because I'm aware of, of, of time. And uh, so our solution was to engage with the community, encourage people to plant seeds, and to um, basically with a positive collaborative approach to work with the local authority uh, transplanting trees that were unwanted from people's gardens and planting them with the council in new designated areas and 
we raise awareness, we attended eco fairs, we present um, our ethos and message, and people are now sponsoring us, and we have birthday certificates, we're making the local press, uh, which is all great, we're, and we're working collaboratively with the local authority, not against them, and that's had a really positive impact. This planting season alone, we've planted over 5,000 small trees, which has never been done before, um, and the planting of uh, mature street trees, sapling, mature saplings has increased from 300 to 700 uh, this planting year alone. So we're very proud and thankful of that achievement. And this is uh, myself with uh, two tree officers from the local authority and one of our volunteer uh, supporters. And it engages the community, um, children come along to plant, um, and it's truly intergener intergenerational. Um, we have from 18 months old, um, planting birthday certificate trees with 80 and 100 year old um, helping. And this is our oldest don donor is uh, Beatrice Benice, who's a 100 year old lady. And for her birthday, she, she, her 100th birthday, she, she donated her entire savings to our project. And we give everybody a tree certificate to celebrate their contribution. And Bernice came out with her family to help plant um, over 15 trees to create a, um, a, a pocket woodland in, in, in her memory. And so, and the next steps is to continue engaging the local community and local um, uh, charity groups and recommendations to the council for um, in, in incorporation into their future tree policy. Um, and so, which is already happening, so that we're now seeing a much, much greater emphasis on green infrastructure within urban environments. This is a recent, um, a recent um, proposal for the high street. And this is a supermarket car park addition. And never before have we seen so much ecology in terms of a planting scheme around a car park before. This is unprecedented and really positive steps in the right direction. So we, we look for inspiration to architects like Ken Yang, um, who's one of the pioneers of bioclimatic skyscrapers and incorporating biophilia within um, architectural and urban design. And we want to see more of this in our towns and cities and uh, you know we should be creating these ecological green corridors in amongst the spaces between buildings and on building facades themselves reducing the urban heat island effect using the greenery as an aesthetic so architects are um, incorporating this within the design from the outset so this is singapore airport which i'm sure you're familiar with um, which um, people instantly feel um, better uh, for this, this green landscape. This is a recent visit to Sweden and also China. You know, China's very good at uh, um, e ecological planting and green space, public spaces. And you just can see the shade in there. It's a very positive, uh, cooling environment. So this is, this is what we want to see is a, is a future urbanism that incorporates greenery and biophilia and this is a recent project we did for South End. This is uh, the terminus at uh, South End railway station and this is what we would like to see um, more, more, more green and pleasant infrastructure and people start responding you know people react to this in a positive way and that can only be a good thing for our citizens. Thank you for listening. I'm Richard Longstaff and it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Richard. It was amazing to know how green infrastructure plays such an important role in city designs for the future.